18 Celtic videos have been posted to this channel since last September, not including this one. Now the Boston Celtics are just one win from 18 championships as a franchise. On the verge of capping off one of the most dominant playoff runs ever, Boston hasn't lost a game in 34 days and are on the verge of making this segment from first take look damn silly. Who do you have winning the whole darn thing? Dallas. I got the Mavs in six. I'm going Celtics in six, Tatum finals MVP. Wow, 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 wow. 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 Again, going against wow. the grain. I'm going Dallas, okay. also Luka, MVP in six. We're going to look at how Boston stuck to their guns amidst severe late game adversity in game three of the finals. The C's two most vital role players who stepped up massively in it, every top play that led to a dramatic New England victory, and much more that you cannot miss. Stay tuned. But just 14.6% of you are subscribed, so what are you doing if you haven't already? Subscribe and turn on notifications. Appreciate you. Back to the content. Stemming the tide of a vicious 22-2 Mavericks run down the stretch to make it a one-point game after Boston had gone up by Jalen Brown's key putback off a Tatum miss is followed by one of the greatest passes you'll ever see from Drew Holiday, where he drives baseline to draw the eyes of all five Mav defenders and whips a lefty midair overhead dime to find a wide open Derek White for a game changing triple to put Boston up six. Tatum spinning through the lane to throw down this beastly two handed hammer was still met with the Mavs keeping it a two point game with just over a minute left. The other half of the best duo in the NBA then comes through, however, off a Derek White pick and pop, where a shifty tween and Hezzy with Hardaway still in the vicinity and forcing him to pump fake, still sees Brown find a way to knock down a tough fall away, which was an utterly clutch bucket. Horford's switchability was huge all throughout, and this was the Godfather's biggest stop of the night right here, where he maintains the low center of gravity and fundamental positioning to stick with Kyrie's quickness off the bounce and get a hand up to bother his fading 2016 finals-esque far right wing triple that comes up short. Al's effort all game was insane, and you can't help but praise how he's replaced Porzingis in all but a few games of these playoffs. That said, Porzingis was outstanding in Game 1, that's a story for another day. But the next man up, up front for Boston that made headlines after Game 3, and rightfully so, was Xavier Tillman Sr. Xavier scored 3 points, blocked 2 shots, snagged 4 rebounds, and was a plus 9 in 11 minutes of action, but his play breached the boundaries of the stat sheet. Identically to Horford, it was Tillman's elite lateral quickness for a big man to be able to switch on to any Maverick and shut them down, which is what most stood out. Foreshadowing what he's done in the finals, he would trash talk Kyrie back in the regular season when he was with the bottom feeding Grizzlies. In game three of the finals, Tillman had his moments of sticking with Irving and neutralizing Kyrie like he did back in the regular season, but it was X's defense on Doncic that was the story on Wednesday night. Who knew this guy had the defensive chops to stick with two of the best guards on the planet on the very biggest stage? He not only did that, but he neutralized both Luka and Kyrie on multiple possessions in this one. Tillman Sr.'s midseason addition goes to show you that you can never get complacent in the front office booth. Tillman was acquired for Lamar Stevens and two future second round picks. Brad Stevens could have easily stood pat, but he never stopped trying to make the Celtics better and it's paid off to the utmost extent. Speaking on Tillman's one triple in this one, Brown would call it a divine experience in terms of knowing Xavier's shot was going in when he kicked it to him. Joe Mazzulla would state regarding Tillman Sr., he played in the Western Conference for three or four years and so he's played against the Mavs, and so he's had that experience. Memphis has used a similar game plan, so he was used to that. Meanwhile, Horford would state regarding Xavier, these are the types of games people remember forever, the type of impact he had. Well said by Al. Shifting from one special Boston role player to another, and when he once played a game in Toronto a few years back, I chirped him from the stands saying, is that Gordon Hayward? But Sam Hauser has made a name for himself. He's not just a Gordon Hayward lookalike. Hauser contributed a team high 9 points off the bench, finished as a game high plus 16, 
but most crucially hit some big time triples to cut into a 13 point Mavs lead in the early going. Where would Boston be without those threes from Hauser is a good question. Those were vital for the Seas. Speaking of vital, these next few plays were just that to help build up what was at one point a 21 point Celtic advantage which they ultimately protected. Drew Holiday would first find a way to both out muscle and out spring a man with 25 pounds of weight and 7 inches of height over him in Derek Lively II to snag one offensive rebound before after a Horford miss, and it's a second O board in a matter of seconds for the former Milwaukee Buck, who's on the verge of being a two-time champion and who was atop the finals MVP leaderboard entering this game. Another man who will be in the discussion for that Bill Russell trophy in Jalen Brown had a couple monster throwdowns in game three, the nicest of which came in the half court. Matched up with Kyrie, Hauser does a great job of setting his screen elusively, not allowing Kyrie to pinpoint which side it's being set on, but it's more so how Brown gains momentum into a drive to his hated on left hand that's special, not to mention his lethal springiness to rise up and obliterate the rim that made this an insane Jalen slam that looked even nicer on the backboard cam. One of the best parts of this play, however, was Tatum's reaction as I guess these guys hate each other. Perhaps the play that topped that one as the play of the night in Game 3 of the 2024 NBA Finals also came from Jalen Brown, but was facilitated by Jason Tatum, as Jason's saucy iso and kick to the corner has Irving looking in the other direction of where the pass is headed, making for this hilarious clip that goes to show how connected the Jays truly are. Furthermore, Tatum and Brown are the first Celtics duo ever to both post at least 30 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in the finals, proving they're the best one-two punch on the planet, and an all-time great tandem in the making. Regarding their amazing to see exchange afterwards where the two superstars embraced, Tatum would say, I told Jalen I was proud of him, and he told me the same. You couldn't have scripted this any better. Meanwhile, Jalen Brown would state, quote unquote, it feels great to be up 3-0, but the job is not finished. Cue that Kobe meme. Job's not finished. Job finished? No, I don't think so. Okay. R.I.P. Mamba, we love you. So, there have only been 10 sweeps in NBA Finals history, but more noteworthy is the fact that there's only one NBA Finals sweep in Boston Celtics franchise history. So yes, they've won 17 rings as of this recording, but the moment becomes that much more significant when you take into account that last fact. That said, with how the Mavericks close this one out, can Boston actually pull off this sweep, or will Dallas extend the series and force the finals back to New England? Let me know your take on that for a chance at next video shoutout. Two shoutouts for my last video and this one next time. Your boy DFlow signing off.